while they do fit better stacked on top of each other like this, I like to initially lay them down one by one. So I'll just do one flat row like this and then I will stack more on top of them inside the bag. So let's go ahead and do that. Sometimes they don't want to cooperate. You got to kind of finagle them a little bit. You know, show them both. <laughs> All right, so right now we've got 12 pods in, but as you can see, we got a little bit of extra space. We got some space here, a little bit of space there. So we're going to squeeze a couple, couple more pods in there and do a couple rows of three. So things are starting to get a little smushed, but it'll all work out in the end, I promise. So don't worry. Just trying to keep it suspenseful for you guys. Is it gonna fit? Is it not gonna fit? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't watch. <laughs> so there you go. Now it's a little tight up in there, but we still got some extra space. We still got some space here on this side. As you can see, I can fit my hand fairly easily. So right there is gonna be where I'm putting the sensors because we got a little bit of space right here. So let's go ahead and get those guys in. So when I stack the sensors to put them in the bag here, as you can see, they are pretty consistent on the side that they sit in the bag. And I'm sure you could shift that around within the bag, but why hassle with it really? So I take the heads of the sensors and when I stack them on top of each other, I just put them on opposite sides. So as you can see, I'm just gonna flip this around and bam. Right there, they're not competing for space because they've got all this extra space up here where this sensor is going to fill. So once we've got those nice and stacked, we're just gonna go in on this right side here. And you know, no need to be super delicate, but you don't wanna, you don't wanna shove too, too hard either. Um, just because this paper right here on the tagaderm of the sensor, you don't want that to pinch and peel off because when that happens, you can't use the sensor because it won't stick any longer. So try to be gentle, but at the same time, you do what you gotta do to get it in there. As Tommy Pickle says, a baby's got to do what a baby's got to do. Okay. So we're flipping those around again so the heads of the sensor are on opposite sides. But nothing too crazy. You don't want to be too forceful. Okay, so right now this is what we're looking at. This is what we're working with. So it's kind of a hot mess, but that's okay because we can fit everything else in and around all those little spaces and those little nooks and crannies. So I still have two more pods to get in there. And as you can see, we still have plenty of space between the top of the bag and where the last pods remain. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fit those in kind of loosely. They don't really need to be too crazily spaced. But again, you can see all these pods are facing the same way because that's how they stack the best. So I found. All right, so this is what we're working with on the inside. And from there, I just take the small things and stick them in and around the spaces. So the needles, I'm literally just gonna drop. them in all those little spaces. You know, they fill pretty, pretty easily. All right, same with the lancets. Again, really tiny. They can fit in all those little spaces. Trying to shake them down so they can get nice and loose. The needles, I'm gonna find, again, some more space. These, I try to line up vertically. Um, just like this, so that way they're not getting crushed sideways, um, which could potentially snap them. You know, that's that's another thing you want to consider with these needles. Don't 
try try to keep away from putting them in between um, the hard pods if you can. So as you can see here, I've got a couple in between the nice padding of the sensors, which is fairly soft. There's a lot of space over here between these needles, so that'll be fine. All right, battery's going in next. Right, that space. All right. Strips going in, and we still have plenty of space up top there. So one thing that I am very particular about is this sensor tagoderm. Because like I said, if it gets squeezed too much and pinches, that tagoderm covering could peel off and then you can't use the sensor anymore. So that's where the alcohol swabs come in handy because I like to use some use the alcohol swabs as padding for the Dexcom head. So I will cover at least this Dexcom right here against the side of that plastic bag with alcohol swabs. It kind of helps distribute the weight of the, the plastic. Once it sucks all that air out, it gets so tight that things really compress. So using these alcohol swabs will give it a little bit more space to distribute that weight. So using these alcohol swabs as a covering over that sensor head acts kind of like a shield and it keeps them from getting compressed too much and pinching that covering up. All right, let's go ahead and throw these alcohol swabs in. This is a nice, a nice pillow. The Dexcom head. All right, so we got some things kind of starting to fall out. That's okay. I'll tuck them down in there. Let's take another look, and I think we are good to go. I think we're okay to seal this up. We've got everything. It's in there. It's it's fairly organized. You know, the whole the whole name of this game is just to get it in there and get it nice and compact. So, time to seal. So here we have my wonderful. Helper and friend to help me out. It's 2 30 in the morning. Oh, that's not that or not that late. Plenty of time to be packing diabetic supplies, don't you think so? <laughs> well, you're a great friend because you're here at 2 30 in the morning, vacuum sealing diabetic things, right? <laughs> Let's get her done. Yeah. Alright, so Emily is going to hold everything down. Well, I hold this really tightly and put it in the lip here so I can suck all the air out and lock her down. Okay, so let's turn it on. And then all we have to do is just stick it in there. So I'm flattening it out. Emily's pushing down and holding things in. Just keep it nice and tight. And then once it latches on, good to go. And then... Three, two, one. <laughs> ah, I missed it. And now we have our nice little Beatty's bag. And last but not least, with that extra space you've got up top here on your bags, you want to write out exactly what you have. So that's important to remind yourself of what you got. And it's also very important to put the expiration dates. Again, that way you know which ones you gotta use first and which ones you can wait until a later date to use them. But that way you've got everything marked, you know exactly what you've got. I love this because it's like so solid. It's like a diabetes brick. And nothing else is moving in here except the strips inside the bottles. So it's like a diabetes maraca. Arriba! <laughs> So this is what works best for my management with the pods and the sensors. You know, if you use a pump, uh, syringes, pens, this could also work for you, but take my idea and run with it. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and comment below. Tell me if there's any questions you have, anything else you want me to cover, and keep the blood pumping, the insulin flowing, and the numbers in check. All right, see you guys. Happy travels.